this is the last section of notes from chapter 22. We're going to deal with um, more about the New Deal. In 1935, the Rural Electrification Act was passed. Before this, only 10% of rural families had electricity. The story is that on Roosevelt's first night at Warm Springs, he was sitting on his porch and he noticed that there were no lights showing at nearby farms because electricity would be in a town and it would go just a little way, but then it was too expensive to keep carrying those lines out to only a few people on each road. So it just didn't go any further. And he because of his time in Warm Springs, knew what a difference it made between people who had electricity and those who didn't. So on May 11th, 1935, the REA law was signed. Lines didn't go out any further than about four miles from each town because it was just too expensive. How the REA worked was that it provided loans to electrical cooperatives formed by rural residents. They would form a cooperative, pay in a certain amount, they would qualify for this loan which would get the electricity around to everybody and then they would pay for what they used and then pay a little more so that they could repay the loan um, to get the whole thing started. There are still REA cooperatives in the state of Georgia, lots of them. By 1940, most farmers in Georgia and in other parts of the country had electricity and it made a huge difference in people's lives. We'll talk more specifically about exactly what happened when the REA ran the electricity to your house. Uh, I got a Georgia story that we'll watch and I have a cool a primary source document written by a woman who's describing what happened when the electricity came to their house. To continue with the New Deal programs, one of the main things that's still around today is Social Security. The Social Security Act provided three main benefits. Retirement benefits to those who paid in, unemployment insurance, and aid for dependent children. So for people who paid into the Social Security system, when they got to a certain age, they would receive back a benefit. You pay in also, as, as part of Social Security, you pay into the unemployment insurance part of it and if you are fired from your if you are let go from your job through no fault of your own you can for a certain period of time collect unemployment insurance and also aid for dependent children whose parents if your parent died before you were 18 you could receive that parents social security benefit un until you were 18 now Farm laborers and domestic workers were not covered under Social Security, so this actually left out many Georgians. Governor Eugene Talmadge did not like the act. He thought it was overreaching by the federal government and refused to participate. In 1936, Roosevelt has to run for re-election. He carries every state but two. In Georgia, what was going on was that um, Governor Talmadge, who really did not like Roosevelt, considered actually running against him for president as an anti-Roosevelt candidate. He decided not to do that, and he ran against Richard Russell and lost. Talmadge courted poor white voters with a message of white supremacy, and he lost because lots of those poor white voters had benefited from FDR's programs like the CCC and the REA and they were going to support Roosevelt because they had benefited from his programs. 
the governor's race was won by a New Deal supporter, Ureth D. Rivers. Um, under in his administration, Georgia began to participate in Social Security and rural electrification. He also worked for education reform. He brought along a seven-month school term, and the state began to supply textbooks. Moving on, in the New Deals, we're getting to the end of the 1930s here. Um, we've got a couple of things that you need to know about. First of all, Roosevelt um, tries to, it's referred to as packing the Supreme Court. Supreme Court had declared parts of the New Deal, like the AAA and the NRA, unconstitutional. So FDR proposed a bill that would allow the president, him, to appoint nine more judges to the Supreme Court. Opposition to this was overwhelming, and it absolutely failed. Even the people who supported FDR and the New Deal thought he was really overstepping his bounds, and, and it just didn't work at all. The last major New Deal reform was the idea of a minimum wage and a 40-hour work week. This was opposed by most Southern Democrats. They viewed it as government interference with business, and they didn't want equal wages for everyone. Overall, the effects of the New Deal were that programs came along that directly benefited citizens, like Social Security, FDIC, um, REA, all of those directly benefited citizens. It also sped up modernization in farming. It was the end of large-scale sharecropping and more crop diversity. And by the end of the 1930s, we've got the economy recovering, but not completely. It really takes World War II to set America on a complete economic recovery. And we'll get to that in the next chapter.